This is so moving. I hear you and Jeremy talking every Sunday. We've got the fellowship. We've got the fellowship. We can't meet. We can't, you know, it's just your, your mind and your heart and getting ready. And now I'm seeing what this is, uh, looking at all you beautiful people from across the world. This is real. I'm, I'm genuinely moved. This is so special. Um, so thank you uh, for inviting me to share for a few minutes. Um, I've started working at the farm as uh, head of tourism and I was just speaking with Ari today and saying, when is the all the fellowship people going to come and spend time with us? We can't wait till uh, Israel opens up and we can welcome you and show you what 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 it feels like to be out there in the hills. Um, so just wanted to share a short thing. Um, I had this experience recently. I was traveling in Australia and I went for a walk to the beach and um, and it's a place that I used to visit in my childhood. And there's a walk from the road to the beach. It's about a 10 minute walk. And as I was walking through there, I was overwhelmed by the beautiful nature. It brought up so many memories and feelings. You know that when you visit where you come from, often it can evoke all these memories, the gum trees and the feeling and the, the wind and the color of the light. And I had this overwhelming sense that in nature, there's this feeling of perfection. Like this moment was perfect. I was right there in the moment. There was nowhere I needed to be, nothing I needed to be doing, just, just breathing and being present. And the thought came to me that the truth is that that is reality. Reality is that this moment is perfect. And what gets in the way is our pain and our suffering and our challenges. Some, for some of us, it's our past. For some of us, it's anxiety about the future. But if there's a way to tap into the moment, just like this picture of nature is perfect, um, then I can realize at every moment that perfection is here. Um, and that is bringing like Hashem, God's presence into this, into this moment, into my heart. And today I was sitting out in the uh, Khan Arugot. My wife surprised me to, to visit me for a few minutes. She brought me a cup of coffee and I shared that story with her. And we're looking out at the valley. It's like, she's like, what are we looking at? We see these hills and these rocks. And is it real? Is it not real? And we were just right there. It was so special. So um, I thought maybe I'd just guide you through a little experience like that we can do together, really dropping into the present moment and opening our hearts to whatever's, whatever we're dealing with. And I know there's no person in the world who's a stranger to suffering and pain. None of us are, are free from the anxieties of the future, but right now we're here. And if we can truly arrive, we can feel that sense of Hashem's presence in our hearts. So this is something that I do. I'm going to invite you to join me and then uh, maybe I'll play a song as well uh, connected with the theme. So I just, just close my eyes and take a moment to feel my heart in my body and gently breathe in through the nose and out through my mouth. And with each breath in, and out, I remind myself that this is exactly where I need to be. Doing this, being with you for a few minutes, and you being with us, and being connected, and a sense that this moment really is okay, is perfect. And letting go of the confusion, letting go of our struggles just for a few moments, and tuning in through the breath. And when I do that, I can have a feeling of gratitude for the gifts that I have, for the gift of being right here. So just take three more mindful breaths, just breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. Just two more. really feeling present and available to give and receive. Well, thank you for whoever joined me in that. I'm going to just get the guitar now. I'll just share with you a, a short sort of song. And I wrote this song, which is on the same kind of theme, that there's nowhere I need to be. Nothing I need to be doing, just being right here. The 
There's nowhere I need to be. Nothing I need to do but to follow you. There's nowhere I need to be. Nothing I need to do but to follow you. Into the night, into the dark, into the cold. Under the stars, under the moonlight, into the end of time. Nothing I need to do but to follow you. There's nowhere I need to be. Nothing I need to do but to follow you. Into the night. Into the dark, into the cold, under the stars, under the moonlight, into the end of time. There's nowhere I need. Nothing I need to do but to follow you. So uh, that's how I feel of, you know, with the breath and with the song, just uh, this feeling of being willing to follow, being willing to be present and see what happens. And with that trust, it feels like anything's possible. Um, and I just sort of finished something I was talking about with Ari today, and I know he's going to talk about it tonight. I was sharing him that I was learning on Shabbos morning. I have a small study group, and we were learning about Pharaoh, about Paro, and it was contrasting the difference between a king, like a, a flesh and blood king, and our great king, Hashem, God. It was saying that with a king, when you strip away all their tools, you know, a king has to sit on a throne, and a king has to wear a crown, and a king has to have a scepter, if you sat on that throne, you're threatening the king's uh, the king's authority. If you take his scepter, if you take away his crown, um, then what's left? You have no king. The king relies on all these symbols, all these like external objects to to remain the king. But with Hashem, we are those things to Him. We are His throne. When we sit in a way, when we honor the way that we sit with people, with respect. When we act, you know, to, with a scepter, when we extend ourselves towards someone else, when we carry ourselves in a certain way, all these things, it's the opposite. When we take these garments, these like divine attributes, we become God's instrument in the world. And um, this is sort of like the true aspect of what it means to have a king. And I feel that personally when I walk, you know, in Israel, when I, when I feel connected, when I'm not in my mind, when I'm not future tripping or thinking about the past, I'm like, I'm, I'm part of this great majesty. So that's what I have to share today, Ari. And um, really, really appreciate being here and seeing everyone and seeing what the fellowship is all about. And again, um, I can't wait till we can open up our doors to you, our gates to you and show you all the amazing things that we're cooking up on the farm um, in the next coming months. So shalom. This highlight was taken from the Land of Israel Fellowship. Every week, hundreds of families from literally around the world come together on our live Zoom sessions to strengthen each other, to inspire each other, and to learn Torah from the land of Israel, in which we connect the dots between the Bible, the Hebrew language, and the confusing events of our times. Go to www.thelandofisrael.com backslash fellowship or click on the link below to join. Thank you.